Now we want to solve the point kinetic equations for reactivity rho. Recall that the point kinetic equations are given as shown here. However, solving for rho in the current form of the point kinetic equations is rather annoying. First, let's discuss Laplace transforms. Like Fourier transforms, they convert from a frequency domain into a time domain. Unlike Fourier transforms, which are based on sinusoids, Laplace transforms are based on exponentials. This makes them better suited to first-order differential equations rather than second-order differential equations, as with Fourier transforms. For a frequency s in units of 1 over seconds, the Laplace transform takes a function f, little f of t and returns a function big f of s. f of s is equal to the Laplace transform of f of t, which is equal to the integral of, from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. The inverse Laplace transform thus states that you can recover f of t by taking 1 over 2 pi times i uh, times the limit as some period t goes to infinity of the integral of gamma minus i t to gamma plus i t of e to the positive s t times our, in, our Laplace function f of s ds. This table presents some common Laplace transforms going from the time domain to the frequency domain, and vice versa. Now let's apply the Laplace transforms to the point kinetic equations from before. Call tilde n of s the Laplace transform of n of t, and tilde c sub i of s the Laplace transform of the concentration c sub i of t. Let's first start with the delayed neutron group equations, such that the frequency times the Laplace transform of the concentration of the ith group minus the initial condition of the ith group equals the delayed neutron fraction of the ith group divided by the mean neutron generation time times the Laplace transform of the neutron number density minus the decay constant of the ith group times the Laplace transform of the ith group concentration. Grouping the tilde ci's together, we see that the left-hand side becomes s plus lambda i times the Laplace transform of the ith concentration equals the delayed neutron fraction divided by the mean neutron generation time times the Laplace transform of the neutron number density plus the initial condition of the ith group. Rearranging, we can isolate the ith group's concentration Laplace transform. Secondly, let's go back and apply Laplace transforms to our, the prompt equation in the point kinetic equations. Here we see that s times the Laplace transform of the neutron number density minus the initial condition of the neutron number density equals the reactivity minus the delayed neutron fraction divided by the mean neutron generation time times the Laplace transform of the neutron number density plus the sum of the delayed neutron groups lambda i times the Laplace transforms of the concentrations of the delayed neutron groups. Now let's substitute in tilde ci of s that we solved for from our delayed neutron groups in the previous slide. Next, we can group like terms with respect to the Laplace transform of the neutron number density on the left-hand side of the equation. Furthermore, note that if a reactor is exactly critical at startup, i.e. when t equals zero, this means that the change in the number of delayed neutrons must be zero. Therefore, dci of t dt is equal to zero when the time is equal to zero. Rearranging, we'll note that the delayed neutron fraction of the ith group divided by the mean neutron generation time 
times the initial condition for the number neutron number density is equal to the ith group decay constant multiplied by the initial concentration of the ith group. This allows us to obtain an expression for the initial concentration of the ith group, which is simply a function of known constants multiplied by the in initial neutron number density. Substituting the initial concentration of the ith group back into the prompt equation and multiplying all terms by the mean neutron generation time yields the expression seen here. Taking the ratio of the initial neutron number density to the initial condition n of 0 yields the ratio of the mean neutron generation time plus the sum over all new delayed neutron groups of beta i divided by s plus lambda i, all over the mean neutron generation time times the frequency minus the reactivity plus the delayed neutron fraction minus the sum over all delayed neutron groups of lambda i bi over the frequency plus the, neutron de the delayed neutron decay constant. Bringing the delayed neutron fraction in the denominator back into the summation in the denominator, we see the following expression. Now we are able to ask, where are the critical points of this ratio? They cannot come from the numerator since the frequency is always greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, any critical points must come from the denominator. Let's set the denominator equal to zero and solve for the reactivity rho. While this will yield infinite values for the Laplace transform of the neutron number density, it will reveal the transition times for various points in the neutron number density as a function of time. Therefore, we can say that the mean neutron generation time times the frequency minus the reactivity plus the sum over all groups of beta i times the frequency divided by s plus lambda i is equal to zero. Call the frequencies that satisfy this equation omega, little omega, and therefore, thus the critical reactivities are equal to the mean neutron generation time times the, the critical frequency plus the sum over all delayed neutron groups of beta i omega divided by omega plus lambda i. This is called the Inhauer equation.